What do Farrah Fawcett, Mick Jagger, and Liza Minnelli have in common? Well, they all flock to Studio 54, the hottest discotheque where the world's elite meet to dance. My guest is Steve Rubell, the guiding genius of Studio 54. Mr. Rubell, for your information, is 33 years old and a multimillionaire. How's it feel? Wonderful. Which, 33 or a multimillionaire? At this point, both. At this point, both. How do you explain the disco craze in this country today? Well, um, in the late 60s, early 70s, people were very preoccupied. They were preoccupied with the war. They were preoccupied with Watergate and all things. They would have had guilty consciences if they did what they're doing today. Public figures couldn't do what they're doing. A peasant's mother couldn't come to a discotheque and dance. Did she? Yes, she did. She was there one night, and she was dancing, and then she brought her sister back the next night. She's five years older than her. How does Lillian try to dance? Uh, she dances like everyone else in the studio. She dances uh, differently than the people we saw before. They dance freely with no partners and whoever they happen to bunk into. Is it true that you've turned away 1,400 people on a Saturday night? Sometimes more, sometimes even more than that. Uh, it just can't accommodate the amount of people at this point, very happily. What makes Studio 54 the incredible success it is? Well, it's, it's a theater, and it was a theater, and we have different drops, and the environment changes, everything changes, and we're continually changing the environment. So it's more than just a, disc a discotheque, like uh, it's really a nightclub and a place where people go to talk and see each other. Not everybody there is dancing. The stars of uh, the Saturday night type of movie are the dancers. Mm -hmm. Not so in the studio. Tell me, you've got all kinds of lighting effects? Yes. And uh, what else to add well, to heighten the atmosphere? We have, a, uh, we have neon drops. We have a volcano that explodes. We have snow. That some of it you saw on my suit before. That was snow? It you, snows. Uh, New and, York's uh, been a heaven for you lately. Right. It snows. I, I don't even use it this way. For, for fear somebody might do something to me. What kind of celebrities do you get? Do they range? Uh, of course Liza comes. Of course Farrah Fawcett comes. But do you get the... Uh, Bankers, politicians, do you get, uh, uh, what, do you get unusual people? We get all very unusual people. We get a large spectrum of the population. I don't think there's any segment that hasn't been there from, for example, from the president's mother to artists who work downtown to theatrical people who are trying to make a living to Broadway dancers who really don't have any place to practice their dancing. So we let them in there while they're unemployed. Henry Kissinger's gotten in everywhere. Has he been there? No, he hasn't been there. We had Cary Grant the other night, and we had uh, uh, we had a lot of people who I hadn't met before. Yeah, he's he's, he's something. Over. Right, he really is gentleman, fabulous. I'd like to look like that right now at this age. I'm, I'm somewhat younger. He's he fabulous. he was fabulous, polite, courteous. He attracted more attention than uh, Farrah. Now, do you only admit celebrities? No, no, we admit everybody. Um, How do you choose? There are 1,400, 2,000 people out there. How many can get in? Well. We can let in 2,500. Right. And there were, you got 1,400 over that? Oh, 1,400 is a light night, really. 1,400, 1,500, 2,000. Um, we choose up by people who want to have a good time, people who want to have fun, people who are light, very light. Well, how do you, you come out, you look at the line, wait, it's freezing cold. I went by the other night. It was 18 degrees above zero. There was a line all the way around the block. Right. What do you do? Case them? Talk to them, speak to them. We never had an incident inside, uh, which is unusual. And uh, we're very careful who we talk to. We're in a neighborhood where there are pickpockets. And there are uh, people who, there are hookers. There are everything. Hookers. What's a hook? No, never mind. <laughs> uh, well, what are your criteria for admitting someone? You really fun-loving. How can you tell that? Uh, you talk to somebody. If somebody grabs your arm tightly and has a tenseness to it, you know that stay away from those people. If people are there to pick up other single people, you don't let them in. It's not a pickup place. It's for people who are simply going there to have a lighthearted time. We don't want the East Side singles crowd or, or for that matter, any young singles crowd where if you're in there, somebody's in front there and trying to pick you up or whatever. And we just don't want that. We want people who are just in there to have fun and not get heavy with each other. People come there to relax. Do you favor couples versus singles? We couples, gay people, you know, uh, uh, couples only because they, you know, if they stay together, it's fine. Do they do the hustle mainly? No, they don't dance at all like the people you saw here. Uh, they dance freestyle. Most of them have other things to do all day, and they can't practice dancing like you people can. And 
do some of the things that uh, these are people they do. touch dances? No, they no, they're not, no dances? completely free. free. Uh, you never see it. Maybe once in a while you see a touch, but touch dancing, I think, is really on the way uh, out. Well, Just I'm like nerd ball. I'm sorry you said that. Oh, really? Because I'm touch dancing a little bit these days. Oh. Uh, uh, I understand it cost you a fortune to get that Studio 54 ready. It took a lot of time. It used to be an old theater. I lived in it for seven weeks. Slept with my partner. Uh, he was a former attorney, then Gina Trago. And he, him and I slept there for seven weeks, seven nights. We had sleeping bags. And we just used to listen to music all night. We just worked till we practically passed out. You have 30,000 man hours of labor involved? Oh, more than that, more than that. How many feet of mirror do you have there? We don't have mu that much mirror. We really, we have that back area where there's mirror, but we, we don't encourage people looking at each other and seeing each other. All the mirror is black mirror, so you really can't see each other. What would an average cab be for a couple that came there the evening? It costs $10 to get in. Mm -hmm. It costs $10 to get in, and drinks are uh, relatively low price for the type of place where they're 250 dollar uh, seventy five and a dollar for a coke. You're selling a lot of white wine? A lot of white wine, light drinks. We don't sell a lot of alcohol. We really don't sell a ton of alcohol. Here, first of all, it's a very late night phenomenon. We're open very late and uh, people come there, they're a lot of more already high and uh already high whiskey wise. On, on whatever, I don't know. You know, they're just they're just high. You know, they've just already been out all over the city and they're just there to have a good time and uh, I don't care as long as they have a good time and don't hurt anybody. Have you ever smelled this faint aroma of uh, marijuana drifting through the place? Never. Don't be silly. <laughs> no. <laughs> and of course, anybody who's had any other kind of drug, you would detect them and reject them at once. Uh, right away. Right. So that place would be pretty empty a lot of the time. Um, do celebrities come to gawk at other celebrities? I guess they do. Don't they? they do, and they really, like on any given night, don't find that many, many celebrities. You'll find whoever's in town, and uh, they really like to go up in the balcony and watch the people dance more than anything else. Uh, a person like Mick Jagger, when he runs in, he runs up to the balcony and he just sits there the whole night and he'll lay back and he'll just watch everybody dancing. It's a, it's a theater and everybody feels the inspiration. You have lights coming down at, from all different places, and uh, the people really, really want to uh, just. It's just the opposite of a regular theater. In other words, the celebrities sort of lay back and stay quiet. And the, um, I mean, you, ha you have your Bianca Jaggers who just love to dance and who go out in the middle of the dance floor and love to be twirled around and will grab the bartender from behind the bar and dance with him. And just about everything you can imagine goes on. She sounds like a barrel of fun. Uh, she, re she really is. A, a lot of people. Grabbing the bartender. Right. Mm -hmm. Just having fun and just. While her husband is up in the balcony laying back. No, while her husband is in London or Paris. <laughs> oh, I thought he was in the balcony, you said laying that, back? That's on different nights. Different nights. Yeah. I see. What kind of music are you playing? Uh, we're playing basically uh, a l little more advanced music, a little newer music. What would that be? Can you describe it? Uh, well, it isn't a description. It's disco music, but it's disco music where in the boroughs and in Long Island, they'll be playing stuff that's already hitting the radio. When something hits the radio, you're not playing it anymore. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you on records, everything? Or? Right, everything is on records. We have a DJ. We have three light men. They're all theatrical people, more than disco people. They're, um, they, they're, they've been in the theater. They work in the theater. We have drops coming down and... Uh, the disco people tend to be a little unreliable, the people who work in disco effects. I feel much safer with theatrical people. One of your most famous special effects is the man in the moon sniffing coke. Oh, no, he's not sniffing coke. What happens is... He is uh, sniffing talcum powder. Right. Well, what happens is the moon comes down and then the spoon comes down, and the spoon lights up, and the snow, we have snow coming down from the sky, comes right down on the people. And uh, they... You know, it's snowing all over the place, and the effect is... It's sort of like an Edgar Guest poem comes to life. No, and then we have all different effects where people come... Right, it is that. And we have all different effects where people come to have a... Uh, to be in touch. We have contexts. We have drops that come down, chimes, where people climb up them, and we have... Uh, climb on the chimes? Right. We have these big... Like they have in gym, high school gym, only right. we've made them soft. And I got the idea from Hawks and... Uh, display in one of the department stores about towels. They're all different colors and they beam off the lights in different colors. And, uh, and you're there every night. Oh, I'm there. I don't miss a night. No. You're circulating. Right. I'm at the door uh, for a good first three, four hours at night, and then I go inside. 
and you're kind of uh, casing the line, deciding who gets in, who doesn't. Once in, have you been wrong? Have you have some tough people come? No, we never had trouble? an incident in the place, but if I, I think I make a mistake. I go right up to them and offer their money back. I don't, I don't let it pass. In other words, if I think I made a mistake and I see two or three people in there who actually doesn't belong, who's bothering somebody, who's talking to somebody's girlfriend, who's asking somebody for an autograph or something like that, we just immediately ask them to leave. You have some gentlemen taller than you who handle such matters? Anybody is taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back.